While we've had a pretty good discipline around um, uh, hard disks and scrubbing them, and this is a well understood problem in the, in the industry, um, there's still a little bit of a, you know, a problem around the way in which we use solid state memories and um, you know, the best security approaches towards those. So you can completely delete all your contents and eventually the microcontroller will erase all the blocks, but it's not happening under the operator control. It's not happening because the user says that. It's happening at the whim of the microcontroller. Today I thought we'd talk about information in permanent storage, try to understand some of the differences, interesting some of the security issues that are different between them. Let's look at magnetic disks. So a magnetic disk, it is literally like a, a record, if anyone can remember what records are. The vinyl record. <laughs> vinyl record, just remember those. And it has a little head, little magnetic reading head, that moves in and out of the magnetic disk. And there are concentric circles here that hold the data. The physical movement of these drive heads adds latency. And so you often find associated with magnetic drives comments like the seek time is 10 milliseconds. Seek times have been 10 milliseconds for a long time. Going back to the 60s and 70s, magnetic seek times were 10 milliseconds. And 10 milliseconds in those days was ooh, blowing fast compared to the processing. But these days, of course, it's a vast amount of time. In 10 milliseconds, your processor has executed billions of instructions. Sometimes, though, there may be a flaw on the magnetic media. It may be manufactured that way, or one of the classics being that if you shake a magnetic drive when it's working, these little heads that sit very close to the, 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 the surface actually will ding the surface and knock some of the oxide off, and you get a fault. And that means that, that whatever block that is in is now failed. Some systems, the operating system is told about this and handles it by never using that block. And in others, the drive hides the fact by magically, if someone accesses this sector, it says, oh no, you don't want that block. I know, I've actually remapped that to another sector somewhere else. And that bad block indirection or redirection um, is very common, but of course, if, we, if all the blocks had previously been contiguous, we've now got a chunk here and then one block somewhere else. So you notice this in the performance. So one of the arguments as to why to tell the operating system is it might want to move the whole file um, uh, so that it can get a nice contiguous set of uh, good blocks for performance reasons. So now we move on to flash memory or solid state drives. Its names are used interchangeably. Here we're using semiconductor memory. And the semiconductor memory, while it has one property that's very similar to disks, which is it's best addressed as blocks rather than as individual bytes, um, we can access any block in these memories at the same speed. There's no difference between what the last block we read and the next block we read. It can be anywhere. But these memories have one particular property that is slightly irritating. In order to write a block, we must first erase it. And there's an erase stage, whereas with a magnetic drive, you can write a new block over, over one that was already there in one go. Uh, it takes the same amount of time as it does to take a read. In the case of flash memories, we must erase a block before we can write it. So um, we have to come up with a slightly different uh, means to actually assign these blocks. There's one other thing that Magnetic media, as long as it gets refreshed every so often, it actually is able to remember for a long time. Flash memory wears out. It actually does wear out over time. Uh, magnetic drives will wear out over time because being mechanical, they will just fail. But in flash memory, inside the flash memory is a little microcontroller. What it does is a thing called wear leveling. It sets its mission to make sure that each of the blocks is used uh, with the same frequency. And it does this by dynamically remapping the blocks. So I may ask for block 72 and it goes, yeah, whatever. I will remap that internally. And it maintains a table internally that remaps all these blocks. So let's, let's just look at a simple example. Let's have our nice simple file. It's composed of contiguous blocks. And then I update one of the blocks. So I want to update block number five. And the microcontroller down here, the wear level, will say, hmm, in order to reuse this, I would need to erase it first. And that takes a long time. So rather, it looks at somewhere else on the flash memory and it says, I'll make that number five. It now marks that block and says, when you get around to it, erase that block. So now the process of writing a block for a file is decoupled from the erasing of the old contents.
That's great. So it provides wear leveling. It can make sure that all of the blocks are used equally. Hence, the lifetime of this device will be the lifetime of you know, when all the cells start to fail, rather than there being one particular cell that happened to get used a lot because it was a block that got rewritten a lot. There are a number of consequences of this on a magnetic drive. If you actually look at how this little magnetic read head works, what it reads is a constantly varying magnetic field strength. And we translate that into a series of ones and zeros by thresholding the signal. We say, well, if it's above this strength, it's one. If it's below that, it's a zero. This very complex signal is not just dependent on the bit pattern that was last written to the drive, but it actually depends on what was there previously. If we had previously a zero and then we write a zero, we may have a field strength that's down here. If it was one and then we write a zero, it may be here, so still below our threshold, so we still read it as a zero. If it was a zero and then a one, it might be here, and if it was a one and a one, it might be here. Now, if we built a different circuit, instead of just discriminating between zero and one, and we said we want to find out what was there previously, we could set multiple threshold levels, and we could read what was there previously before we'd overwritten it with the new block. And this has actually been used by people to recover information from hard drives, and it's one of the reasons why, whenever you dispose of a hard drive, you are advised to run one of the many algorithms that uh, rewrite the blocks multiple times over and over again with very defined patterns in order to essentially leave random noise behind uh, rather than trace of your actual signal. And the whole industry in terms of people securely erasing magnetic drives. And then, of course, if you're paranoid, you then physically destroy it as well. But first of all, you've got to destroy the contents. Now, who uses these sorts of techniques? Well, you'd have to say some of your national security agencies might use these sorts of techniques to find things if there are big secrets. But people have also used this just for commercial criminal activity as well, to find out information. But we have a solution to this, which is algorithms that where we rewrite the blocks over and over again, it erases all trace of the data. But oh dear, our flash drives. Let's remember what they do. Here's the file I want to erase. So I run this algorithm and it says, right, write all over these disk blocks. But the microcontroller is going to go, oh no, that's going to take too long. I'll write a whole new set of disk blocks. And it puts these on the, please erase these sometime in the future list. As you run the algorithm multiple times, it will continue to rewrite this file in a new area of memory, leaving behind the actual data that was there previously. Now the little microcontroller down here is eventually going to get around to cleaning these cells out and erasing them. But until it does that, that data has not gone away. You quite happily delete all your files, you run this algorithm to rewrite all the file contents and erase them, and lo and behold, all the contents are still there. And this has been used quite a number of times. A classic example of camera thieves who had erased the flash memory, but hadn't quite sufficiently erased it to the point at which the police were able to recover the files that were there previously. But it does mean that that little USB drive or SSD drive has to be continued to be plugged in. So if you delete all your files and, and unplug it, then most of the contents has not actually been erased and is still available for someone to rediscover. You buy yourself a four gigabyte Remember flash memory, you've actually probably got a six gigabyte flash memory. The most amazing thing you then discover, which threw me for a while because I'd rather forgotten it works like this,